Hi friends, uh, welcome back to Coffee with Ravi. One of the things that we're trying to do this month is trying to raise awareness about gastric cancer. Gastric cancer is cancer of the stomach. In other words, the basic anatomy of the GI tract is there's the food pipe, which is the esophagus, there's the stomach, and then there's the small bowel and further down. And I'm technically referring to that portion, that sac that holds the food right up beneath the chest as the stomach. Fortunately, the rates of gastric cancer deaths in the US is going down from 1950s. The geographic age is variable and the med median age of diagnosis is around 70. It seems like it's more common in men, also African Americans, Native Americans and Hispanic population. If you look at the worldwide incidence, you will see that the shaded areas is where the deeply shaded areas is where the incidence is higher. So the US is not so high, but it just gives you a sense of how the distribution is across the world. What puts somebody at risk for gastric cancer? I'm dividing it as definite risk factors, as well as probable and you know goes down that way. In terms of definite, if there's a type of polyp in the stomach called adenomatous polyp, in other words, these are growths, uh, not all stomach polyps are at risk factors for gastric cancer, but adenomatous polyps are. If the stomach grows bald, in terms, there's a condition called atrophic gastritis, where the lining of the stomach, because of immune activity, etc., grows bald, it goes through a series of changes and puts you at risk. You know, it also can cause B12 deficiency associated with it. Cigarette smoking is a, a risk factor. Prior Epstein-Barr virus infection is a risk factor. If somebody's had a portion of the stomach removed, in other words, a bilirat 2, more bile seems like it gets into the stomach. Uh, H. pylori infection, it's a common infection of the gut, uh, and we test for that, it, among other things, it causes ulcers, etc. And uh, some change in the lining of the gut because of some irritation called intestinal metaplasia are all definite risk factors. People who have family history of gastric cancer, in other words, first degree relatives of somebody, they're at slightly increased risk. There are several genetic syndromes called familial adenomatous polyposis, hereditary non-polyposis, colon cancer, juvenile polyposis, and puts jaeger syndrome. These are all risk factors for gastric cancer. There are some probable causes which include some dietary factors, if somebody has history of ulcers, if there's obesity, there's a condition called pernicious anemia that we talked about. If there's regular use of aspirin or other non-steroidal use or snuff tobacco use because a portion of that gets swallowed. And then there's ones that are possible, which include a diet that's rich in nitrites. This is in preserved meats, higher alcohol use, sort of a lower intake of fresh fruit. These are just a few things that are just possible uh, uh, risk factors. And then there's some questionable risk factors, but I'd like us to focus mostly on the uh, ones that are more, def uh, more definite or probable. So what can we do? Doing an upper endoscopy or a camera test on, some pa in a, on a select group of patients. These are people who have symptoms after the age of 55 or this family history of gastric cancer or people who have known infection for H. pylori or known intestinal metaplasia of the stomach. All of these are good indications for going down. Also, if there is Helicobacter pylori infection, we should treat it. The question becomes, are non-steroidals protective for gastro cancer? Doesn't seem that. You know, there's some sort of minor evidence that statins help. You know, statins are drugs like lip Lipitor, other things that lower cholesterol. Uh, can they lower gastric cancer, perhaps, uh, small data, and minor data that antioxidants such as beta-carotene, selenium, but some of these you get in fresh fruits and vegetables. It seems to be some data that a Mediterranean diet seems to be uh, protective against gastric cancer. When you look at gastric cancer on endoscopy, you can see this ulcer, it's a bigger ulcer. Uh, it looks angry, the edges are thickened, they're raised. So therefore, when somebody has an ulcer, when we find it, we typically go back in a couple of months to make sure the ulcer is healed and it's not gastric cancer because a non-healing ulcer could be gastric cancer. So I'll leave you with this information today. In other words, what are the risk factors? How do we prevent it? 
and uh, in subsequent posts we can talk a little bit more in depth about some of these other things. Thank you.